So now I feel like I want to take you to Romans 8. Because this is another aspect here in Romans 8 of how Holy Spirit wants to help us in our intercession. Because he's the, he's the power source that births. All we do is release him through our prayers and our declarations and our speaking the word. and Obedience. But Romans 8 is one of those just great, I mean, what do you say, Romans 8? But Romans 8, 26 is uh, when we don't know how to pray as we should, Holy Spirit helps us. And we may not know what God's will is, but he knows, and he prays according to the will of God. And then the next verse, 28, says what? Yep. It's that probably most quoted verse in the Bible. All things work together for good. Of course, I used to make people, get people upset when I'd say what I'm about to say. Because I'd say, that's the most abused and misused verse in the Bible. Because all things don't work together for good. Nor do all things work together for the good of those that love God and call it according to his purpose. They can, and he wants them to, but it's not automatic. That's why the verse starts with a conjunction. And that gets people upset when I say that because now I mix theology with English. And... <laughs> but you know what a conjunction does, don't you? It connects what's about to be said with what's just been said. Somebody said a conjunction makes a junction, and that's a good way to remember it. So he tells us about how the Holy Spirit wants to help us, and then he says, this is my, this is my translation now, this is my interpretation. And if and when that happens, all things will work together for the good of those who love God. So what we do with that verse is just anything that bad that happens, we just, okay, that's our way of finding hope or you know, comfort. It's just, oh, all things work together for good. Well, they don't. They don't. So we need to understand 26 and 7 so we can experience 28. I don't, I don't say that, to, you know, I, I, I'm not mocking anybody. I just say that because I, I feel like any, the enemy will use anything that he can to, to put something in us that releases us from responsibility. I know, well, I don't, it doesn't matter what I do. God's just going to take care of it. Well, no, that's not how it works. It's just not how it works. So it can happen, and he wants it to happen. So when you back up to 26 and 7, he helps us in our weakness. I think the King James says infirmity. That doesn't mean sickness. The word is asthenia. Two words. Ah makes it negative. The root word there is sthenos. S-T-E-H-N-O-S. Sthenos. Sthenos or asthenia means without strength or ability. A good way to translate it would be the inability to produce results. The inability to do something. So when I'm in a situation and, and as a natural human being, I don't have the ability or the power to do this, I am not without help because he comes to help me in my inability. <clears throat> and who has not prayed about something and felt, humanly speaking, such an overwhelming sense of I, I don't I feel powerless I feel help I don't know what to do that's very human and he and God knows that somebody says but he says in those times when you feel Abraham Sarah that you have no ability to do this I'm going to help you <clears> Thank <throat> you. 
<clears throat> then he, he goes a step farther and he says this verse, one of the reasons we are without ability to do it, one of those reasons is we don't always know how to pray as we should. <clears throat> the word well let, let me let me comment on that before I define the word there have been many times when I've been asked to pray about something so, sometimes my own life or a situation I'm facing and say Lord I, I'm not sure how to pray here Sometimes people ask me to pray for a situation. And if you don't know that situation well, questions can come up. It happens to me frequently. Uh, now, I don't know if this person they're asking me to pray for, I don't know where they are, their walk. I don't, maybe there's bitterness or maybe they're fighting God and he's got to do this or maybe, maybe that's not it maybe they're okay in their walk with him and this needs to happen or maybe they're just stubborn mess and he's going to have to get a tough one I don't know how to pray because he says we don't know how to pray as we ought well that's a, just a, little, that's a little Greek word three letters die D-E-I from Deo D-E-O and it first is, in its root meaning, is a legal term. That means that which is necessary or right in the nature of a case. So that which is binding. This is the word for bind in Matthew 16. Binding and loosing. Because even though that word means binding, binding means physically tying something up, in its root concept, that, that's a derived meaning. The, the meaning of the word is literally is something that is legally binding, like a contract, or a legal hold. Or my lexicon said, a contract that binds, or a marriage contract, you know, it's, this is binding. So he puts it in this verse and he says, sometimes we don't know in the spiritual realm, we don't know what really needs to happen. Where did the enemy get the hold? What's working in this life? What have they done? What have they said? What's happened? Is there a root here? Is this a generation? Oh, and it's over. I don't know what's necessary or right in the nature of the case. And that produces an inability to produce results. This word is so strong. <clears throat> when, 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 when the lady came to Jesus in, in Luke 13, that was had a spirit of infirmity that would cause her to be bent over. And he knew they were just testing him, going to see if he healed this lady on the Sabbath. Because you weren't supposed to heal people on the Sabbath, for crying out loud. <laughs> and he said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed from this infirmity on the Sabbath. Well, when he threw that daughter of Abraham thing in there, it kind of messed with them because they didn't know they didn't know how to answer it. But literal Greek translations do do more with that verse, especially Weist, who's translated in a way that communicates that what he was really saying was it's not just a good idea, ought not. It wouldn't it just be kind of nice if I did this? He's saying she's a daughter of Abraham. And healing is the children's bread. She has a covenant promise through him of healing. And the healer is here. Therefore, it is necessary, right, legally binding on me that I healed her, woman, thou art loosed. 
And Wiest actually adds a two-word sentence to that verse at the, at the end of it when he says all that. He said, oh, not is it necessary, it's binding on me. That it, and he said, I must do this. Oh. That just makes me want to run around this room right now. <laughs> and you, you get the sense of the strength of this word. This is a word in Luke 18 where he said, men ought always to pray and not faint. He's not saying it would be a good idea if you prayed. That's what, kind of what we mean by ought. You ought to do something. But no, 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 no. He said, it's, it is binding upon you. You must do this or you'll faint. <laughs> 